What's up everyone, Mikey Bell here with Outdoor Adventure Training, another follow along ski workout. This is corduroy quads, a bit of a tongue twister, but an excellent routine to not just strengthen our quads, of course, we're also gonna be targeting the adductors and the glutes and hamstrings. This is following up after our groomer glutes workout. We're still in the green runs. These are our easy stability workouts. Soon enough, in the months to come, we will certainly be advancing to those intermediate and advanced workouts. The corduroy quads workout is featured in our powder prep program that goes live on October 2nd. You can sign up now and save 20%. It's gonna be an awesome 12 week program designed specifically to get your legs and your core in the best shape of your life for an epic El Nino season coming up. This is a fairly simple 35 minute workout. You don't need a lot of equipment. I'm gonna have my 18 to 22 inch box for step ups. You're just gonna need your body weight for the split squats. And for the reverse step up, we're gonna need some sort of a small step. So I'm using some weights that are stacked up, a stair in your house, a curb, something between six and 12 inches, depending on your strength and mobility. And we'll talk all about that during the workout. Of course, we'll start out with a warm up. And again, some isometric loading to really dial in that neuromuscular efficiency. I know a lot of you are eager to get into the gnarly workouts. We're gonna get there. We have to do this in a smart and systematic way. So we set ourselves up for success and not injury. Let's get started with the workout. So we'll open the Outdoor Adventure Training app, click on the corduroy quads workout. You can see our warm up starting with leg swings, some isometric loading we'll do two rounds of today and followed by just a quick circuit, three exercises, three times, but they're each one leg at a time. So starting off with leg swings, I'm gonna do these stationary today. I'm gonna hold a dowel, hips are feeling a little tight <laughs> after the glute workout yesterday. It's just trying to stretch it out. Reviewing the footage from yesterday's groomer glutes workout, I noticed in my leg swings, I was like moving my upper body a lot, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but contributing to our proprioceptive awareness and core engagement and posture, really wanna try to minimize that extra motion. Switch to the other leg here. Slightly different dynamic warm up in today's workout. A little bit more quad mobility, hip mobility, just because of the nature of the workout that's coming. Butt kicks, put these in most dynamic warmups, just a good way to get warmed up. Cardiovascularly. So in the powder prep program, the groomer glutes and the corduroy quads are not back-to-back -back days like I'm doing today. <laughs> There's a core day in between to give you some rest. The magic carpet core. <laughs> High knees, going right into it, keeping that heart rate up. This workout, I wouldn't say, is particularly more difficult than groomer glutes, but some of you might find it's gonna challenge your balance quite a bit more because there's a lot of single leg exercises. In fact, all of them, we're kind of focusing on one leg at a time. Walking quad stretch. So just reaching opposite hand, opposite leg, just a subtle pull. One to three seconds is all you really need. No static stretching before exercise. You should know this by now, if you've been following along for any amount of time. <laughs> static stretching should be reserved for after exercise, after activity. Same with skiing. Before you go skiing, static stretching is not the way. Maybe we'll make like a pre-work or pre-ski warm-up routine. That'd be good. Walking lunge and reach. So walking lunge and the leg that's back, I'm simply gonna reach my hand up. Just a subtle lean and reach. Really good stretch through the anterior chain, hip flexor. 
Love this stretch. Kind of building on the standard walking lunge here. Hip flexors are a little bit tight. I actually did the groomer glutes workout twice yesterday. Yes, I know. Just couldn't get enough of that. That fresh cord, you know what I mean? <laughs> actually, real reason, side lunges. Get those adductors stretched out, just kind of alternating side to side. Whatever worked for you here yesterday in the second workout that wasn't filmed, I just kind of went side to side like this. It can be a really nice way to just keep it active, get more reps in that way. Out here in Ashland, Oregon, it's a little smoky, it's a little hot. <laughs> it's late September now, and we got some wildfires burning. Don't really have the luxury to get out on the trails the last couple days, so taking advantage of it, cranking out some garage workouts. That's where dreams are made and broken. A few more of these, just mixing it up. Dynamic stretching, you gotta be intuitive, you know? If like your left adductor is like particularly tight, just work reps on that side. Inchworm. Okay, so again, goal is to keep the knees locked. So if you can't touch the floor, bend your knees as much as you need to. Walk out to a plank and then here, knees are locked. Small steps with the feet. Walking back out. Sometimes I like to do a little push up. I might be due for an upper body day soon. <laughs> a lot of leg dominated exercising lately, but I love it. camera here. <laughs> well, downward dog. Good stretch through the entire posterior chain. Good work. Okay, so we got isometric loading. If you're following along, similar to the groomer glutes workout. We're doing two of the same exercises, the isometric load and the forefoot load, but we're doing it twice this time. So what that looks like, the first time through, I'll demo as usual and perform the exercise. Right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. The second time through, we'll maybe make it a little bit more difficult by adding some external resistance in the form of a weight but totally optional, okay? So, single leg load isometrically. I'm just trying to bend that ankle, bend the knee, bend the hip, keeping the spine nice and loaded. And then isometrically squeezing the muscles, right? So again, we're developing that neuromuscular efficiency, really thinking about contracting all of those muscles. Focus on a point, stay stable, make sure you're breathing. <laughs> and we're going right away to the other leg. No rest, switching sides. Don't need rest when we're just doing one leg at a time because the other leg's been resting the whole time, right? From the anterior view, I'm really trying to keep that knee in line with the second and third toe. I'm trying to stay externally rotated, right? If we're loading like this, that's how we're gonna perform. It's not really what we're after. Just that subtle external rotation. Starts with the foot. Ten seconds left. Hang in there. Should be feeling this, working in a good way, right? It's getting things firing. Really still part of the warm up, you could argue. 20 second rest. We're doing the same thing, but now on the forefoot. So all that means for you, just try to keep your heel off the ground. The higher it is off the ground, the harder it's gonna be. Do what's appropriate for you. 
If you struggle a lot with balance, it's good that you're here, but also stay close to a wall. I'll try to stay away from the wall today. <laughs> Although sometimes it's tempting. Super stoked on the powder prep program. It's looking really good. Building out all the workouts, they're fun, they're exciting. We got special holiday workouts on there for Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas. Winter solstice workout. Should be pretty fun. <laughs> Great way to stay fit through the holiday season. Have some accountability. Switching legs right away. If you have questions about the program, don't hesitate to hit me up. Email, Instagram, whatever works for you. Facebook Messenger, happy to chat, book a free consultation. Almost there, team, and then we'll have a short rest before repeating this sequence one more time. Okay, 40 second rest, shake out the legs, get a sip of water. So for the second time through, like I mentioned, I'm gonna add a little bit of resistance. I'm gonna grab a dumbbell, that's out of the frame here. <laughs> 20 pound, janky dumbbell, nothing fancy. Bought it used, if you're looking for weights, go to a local used gear store or Goodwill. That's the best place to get this stuff. It's not like dumbbells expire or go bad. <laughs> it's just steel. It doesn't really matter what form it comes in. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the weight on the side of the standing leg. You will find that oftentimes with the resistance, a few things are gonna change. You're gonna get more engagement because of the resistance. You're gonna feel your core challenge more as to not get pulled down. And you might actually find it much easier to balance. Whenever I use the weight, I feel way more stable. It's kind of weighing me down some. And I think that greater activation kind of helps eliminate some of that instability. Bend that knee, bend that hip, get low. Nice work, right to the other side, switching hands, switching legs. You certainly don't need to use weight with this. Just wanna give people the option. They wanna ramp up the intensity ever so slightly. Real excited for some of these more advanced workouts coming down the pipe, but also, these are honestly the most important. If you skip these, you're setting yourself up for injury and less than ideal progression. 10 seconds left, hang in there. You're done. Excellent. Short rest, going back to the first leg. Doesn't matter if it's right or left, wherever you started though. Now we're gonna do it on the forefoot. I'll try anterior view, just to show you the reality of what's going on here. So. Up on the toe with the resistance. These do get easier the more you do them if you're really struggling with this with balance. Find that balance is one of those things for a lot of people that I work with gets better really quickly. If you haven't been doing a lot of single leg balance core work, these are gonna be really tough. <laughs> but down the road, they will get better in weeks rather than months or years. <laughs> with consistent practice, that is. A lot of balance in the powder prep program. Right away to the other side. Feeling that set. <laughs> Two days in a row. Don't usually recommend, but gotta get in here and stay active on the tube. Got a bunch of new subscribers lately. Thank you so much, we're super grateful to have you on here. Gets us fired up to film more. Keep that bend, keep that heel up. Focus and breathe. Ten seconds left. Hang in there. You're done. 
Nice work. Okay, I'm gonna keep this dumbbell handy. You never know what's gonna happen. So, for the workout, first exercise is step ups, all right? So we're just doing these for stabilization. We're gonna talk a lot about technique. Make sure you have exceptional form. So when we get to more advanced variations of step ups and we start adding resistance and compound movements, this should be fundamental. Although we're not stepping up when we're skiing, a lot of the same muscular systems, step ups have gotta be one of the most functional exercises on the planet. So what I'm really focusing on, starting with the foot, staying externally rotated okay so if your arch collapse your knee collapses right so externally rotated collapse a little bit there one really interesting thing that is a bit of a love-hate relationship with the foam box is it's actually quite unstable love hate I love it because it makes it more difficult hate it because it makes it more difficult but really pay attention to your knee if every step up your knees caving in, we're not activating the glutes and hamstrings, which are the prime movers. A lot of quad and adductor, which again, they're synergist muscles. But really focus on and clearing the hips up top. Balance for a second or two. Coming down slow, staying externally rotated. Right away to the other side, left leg now. Stabilization step up. Chest up, good posture. The next set I'll do from the lateral view. So you can really see what that looks like. Notice I'm almost over exaggerating that knee placement because the tendency is to cave in. So just subtly external rotator, rotating. <laughs> So you might be wondering like, why is this called the corduroy quads if we're working so heavily on glutes and hamstrings? Well, the next two exercises, <laughs> the split squat and the reverse step up are definitely more quad focused, which obviously is essential for a skier, but this is the foundation. And if we can have a strong posterior chain, it alleviates that pressure off of the anterior chain. One more for good measure. Okay, move this out of the way for now. <laughs> okay, so the ATG split squat. This is taken from the knees over toes guy, but also he just made this exercise famous. It's been around for a long time. But what I want you to do is get into a bit of a wider than usual lunge position. And rather than just dropping straight down in our split squat, our goal is to actually drive the knee as far forward as we can, okay? So this is kind of what I'm going for. Some rules, caveats, and heel has to stay planted. I'm not pushing up into my toe. I'll save that for another time. For this exercise, the purpose of this, I'm gonna keep the heel down and grounded. Push through the leg. So I understand that my calf hip mobility might be better than yours, might not. If you're only going this far, that's fine. Just work whatever range of motion you can. This is just as much about mobility as it is strength, okay? We'll show you some tricks on future rounds of what you could do if you're struggling with mobility big time. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. Switching to the other side, so nice wide stance. I'm up on my back toes, my heel is up, toes are straight ahead, pushing forward, driving mostly through the quad, and you should feel a really good stretch through the anterior chain of the back leg. Notice my spine is staying in good alignment and not leaning forward. My shoulder is still over my hips the whole time. This is an exercise I really love. Practice very often. Drive that knee forward. Push through the whole foot. A couple more reps. Good balance involved with this one, especially when your legs are out wider. 
Nice work. I'm gonna pull these weights in a little bit. So for the reverse step up, we'll talk through it as, of course. I'm actually gonna center this a little bit more. Okay, so rather than stepping up, we're almost stepping down. This leg is gonna stay up on the step the whole time. Start small, work your way up if necessary. And similar to the ATG split squat, what I'm really trying to do is drive this knee forward. Just so my heel taps, coming back up, okay? Doesn't look like much, but again, from the lateral view, I'll go this way. I'm really thinking about keeping that heel grounded and pushing the knee forward, okay? That is really the key. And all the while, not letting this knee cave in, <laughs> staying externally rotated. You might find that sometimes it wants to buckle in like mine did just right there. Nice and slow. Excellent for calf, foot, ankle health, strength and mobility, as well as activating the quads. But still, I feel this in my glutes and they should be firing. It's still somewhat of a step up on the way up, but we're really focusing on the eccentric. <sighs> way down. Switching sides here. And you will find <laughs> that one leg is easier than the other. <sighs> so the knees over toes guy, his whole thing is it's okay to push your knee over your toe, which I agree 1 million percent. <laughs> uh, most outdoor activities in fact require you at some point to put your knees over your toes. So certain exercises like squats, maybe that's not the best idea because of the biomechanics, but this exercise is intended to push that knee forward. Getting toasty in the garage gym. 76 degrees. Ten seconds left. <laughs> Not a lot of airflow. <laughs> Love it. One more rep here. Done. Nice work. Two, Get some water. 40 second rest. We're repeating that. Two more times, should feel good. Legs should start to be pretty warm by now. Just wanna reiterate that these workouts might not feel super hard and you might not necessarily be super sore the next day, but I'll tell you what, they're pretty dang effective. Okay, so for the step up, I'm gonna hold a 10 pound medicine ball. Totally optional. You could hold a dumbbell on the side of the standing leg. You could hold a light kettlebell. You could hold nothing. You could hold a backpack. <laughs> but just another way, I'm gonna show you from the lateral view. My goal is to not rock forward, okay? We're not using momentum. You're only cheating yourself. Chest up tall. <sighs> hold that for a second. Come back down. Of course, you'll see there is some minor rocking. If you're rocking excessively like this, I would ditch the weight, keep working body weight, decrease the height of your step. Nice and controlled. So on the way down here, I'm not pushing the knee forward. I'm actually trying to sit back. My knee really isn't crossing my toe in this exercise. or at least that's the goal. Right away to the other side, left leg, chest up. Again, I'm driving through the heel, just like in a squat or a glute bridge. However, my whole foot is still planted. Notice I'm coming down slow. I could do a better job of that always. Keep that knee out. A few more reps, gang, get it done. Seconds left. Hang in there. 
Nice work. Okay. ATG split squat. Back to that. If you feel you struggled with mobility, getting something like a small weight to put under the heel of the front leg is gonna help your mobility tremendously. Just like that, you could use a board, you could use a dumbbell. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just really work on range of motion here. Maybe on the final set, we'll add some resistance. But really trying to get deep into this range of motion. Again, if you're not going as deep as I am, that's okay. This is years of training, mobility and strength and stability to get to this point. Keeping the knee out. Be careful not to dump in your low back over arching, right? Still drawing in through the abdominals. You'll find that <laughs> that'll decrease your range of motion because of the hip flexors. For anybody that watched the groomer glutes workout in its entirety, I'm really sorry for the microphone mishap. It's pretty funny. The audio is good the entire video until I decided to talk about it. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Okay, switching sides. Same thing, it's all about the setup. Make sure that back heel is up. Keeping the core tucked in. Pushing that knee forward. All right, I'm definitely clearing the plane of that toe. focused. <laughs> Exercise is a great activity to stay present for. Really, you can just stay mindful with your breath, the sensations in your body. It's no different than the yoga of stretching, which is the yoga of exercise and fitness. Okay, reverse step up. I'm going to add a little bit of weight just by holding the 10 pound medicine ball. I am sweating. <laughs> I'll go left leg first here. Try to give you a good view from the lateral side. Okay, so really trying to push that knee forward. You may find that maybe you wanna increase the height of your step a little bit. Whoops. That's great if you're feeling confident, but not necessary. Again, this is a lot of mobility, a lot of Slow, controlled motion. It's not about the weights. Really, it's never about the weights. Anybody that tells you otherwise is a liar. Or not really, they just don't know any better. Definitely feeling the difference with the added resistance. Hopefully by now you're starting to understand why it's corduroy quads, <laughs> although it's glutes and hamstrings as well, it's a lot of quad, which is great. Your quads have been burning at the end of a long powder run. If you say no, you've never had a long powder run. <laughs> One of the paradox of training for ski season is no matter how much you train those first few days of skiing, your legs are going to be smoked. There's nothing like sport specific training, even though we can closely replicate and mimic some motions and muscle groups, it'll never be perfect. You're going to suffer. You're going to struggle and that's good. But all of this will help you adapt quicker and more, most importantly, reduce the, your risk of injury throughout the season, having that longevity. I want to ski for many decades to come. It's much more than just this winter. Ten seconds left. Hang in there. <sighs> Got to keep that knee out. You're done. <sighs> nice work. Okay, one. one more round, and that's it. Not a terrible workout. I am certainly sweating. Wah. But hey, it feels good.
For my final set of step ups, I'm gonna hold the medicine ball. I'll go anterior view again. Okay, so a lot of times holding the ball or something like that, the biggest thing is it does is it engages your core. Holding this weight out in front, you'll feel it right away. Your core has to activate to hold that. And anytime we're activating our core, you're gonna feel better balance. You're also gonna get more of a caloric burn out of your exercise most likely, which for some folks might be a good thing, for others, maybe not so much. I would be curious to know if you're following along on YouTube or through the program, what kind of soreness you're experiencing, if any at all. Sometimes with these workouts, it's a different kind of soreness. It's not like, ow, that's really sore. It's more of a fatigue or just the subtle noticing that that muscle has been worked. And that's really what we're going for. You shouldn't be getting extremely sore from these workouts. If you are, I would like to hear more about your sleep, nutrition, hydration protocols, because those three things alone can make or break how sore you are the next day. Just do whatever you can to get a good night's sleep. That's the number one thing. Sleep is, I think, the most underrated component of health. You could work out all you want, but if you're not getting the sleep you need, your cortisol levels are gonna be through the roof. And you're just not gonna recover, you're not gonna adapt. Get that sleep. Focusing on the knee, externally rotated. I am sweating, man. One more. Okay, cool, I'm gonna ditch. The step up, box, We're done with that. Split squat, how can we spice this up? I might hold the weight. When in doubt, hold the medicine ball. Right leg forward, left leg back. On the back toe, driving the knee forward. Also, if you're really struggling with balance in this exercise or any of these, Stay close to the wall, use the trusty closet dowel, whatever you need, posture. Oh yeah, feeling these on the final round. And you can certainly add resistance in the form of dumbbells, barbell on your back. We'll get to that. More so in the, uh, the blue square and black diamond workouts. Don't you worry. You're done in three, two, one. ATG Switching legs here. Remember that patience yields immediate results and if you're always eager to get to the next thing you're not going to get as much out of the thing you're doing in the present moment so enjoy it where else would you rather be if you say anywhere other than watching this ridiculous workout video and doing these silly exercises you should reassess because these things aren't silly this is a great workout and every workout matters no matter how short how small how tired you are going into it building the habit that's what it's all about baby just got to show up nice work set that down but I am not done with it final set of the reverse step ups we got two minutes left and we're done, team. Okay. Great job. <laughs> Three, two, one. 
really working on driving that knee. Ran 11 miles this week, which is unfortunately the most I've ran in, in a month due to traveling. Although I ran a few miles a week out there, it was tough to stay consistent with it. So my calves are a little tight. <laughs> so this feels really good. Stretching out that Achilles tendon. Getting those quads firing. Pay attention to that knee. Don't get sloppy on these last few sets. This is where dreams are made, remember? Nice work, right away to the other side. Final set, team, get it done. Good work. Focus in. I feel this quite a bit in my glutes. <laughs> Not just the quads, it's really a full leg exercise and core. Fifteen seconds less left, gang. Get her done. A few more, come on. Great job, wow. <laughs> I am really sweating. It feels really good. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Maybe a four to a six again. Not IPAs, RPEs. Hopefully the legs are feeling good and strong. And thank you so much for joining us in the Corduroy Quads Workout. To learn more and get signed up for the Powder Prep Program, head over to Outdoor Adventure Training slash Powder Prep. Link is in the description. Check it out, hit me up if you have questions. The pre-sale ends October 2nd, and prices are gonna go up. Get on it now if you're enjoying these workouts. It's gonna make a world of difference in how much you enjoy this winter. Hopefully, keep fingers crossed, we get a ton of powder, and we'll see you right here next time at Outdoor Adventure Training.